Hi, I am Alberto Rovellini. I am a postdoc at the University of Washington. And uh, in this talk, I will present uh, an approach to go from uh, georeference data uh, to uh, Atlantis with a geostatistical modeling approach. So the purpose of this approach that uh, we developed here as part of putting together the Gulf of Alaska Atlantis model is to map uh, um, spatial reference data to uh, the Atlantis boxes. So uh, basically come up with one box value for Atlantis. And that is useful for some of the parameters of uh, the uh, bio.prm, uh, such as the movement parameters, as well as the initial conditions uh, of Atlantis. So we'll be uh, using the term georeference data quite loosely here. Um, and it really just means data that has some kind of spatial information attached to it. It can be on a regular or irregular grid. Uh, it can be sites, points, stations, transits, uh, and anything like that really. Um, it can come as counts, as biomass, as CPUE. Uh, ideally, it would have some sort of uh, effort measure, so it could be area swept, it could be something else. Um, and some examples of georeference data would be uh, survey data, features catch, satellite data, and so on. So uh, pe people use this kind of data quite often uh, when, when, when developing Atlantis models. And, and, and like I was mentioning, this, this can have a use for the initial conditions, so when you decide um, how many individuals you need to have per box. Um, it can be used for the prescribed movement, so the uh, S1 to S4 parameters for juveniles and uh, adults in the biology.prm file. Uh, it can help with horizontal distribution of the recruits, uh, with uh, removals by box for the catch data, habitat cover, and so on and so forth. So obviously with uh, Atlantis being a spatial model, there is, you know, a, a lot of potential applications for uh, uh, methods like these and for georeference data in general. Um, people have done this, uh, like I mentioned, for many models, and we just want to present one possible way of doing this. Uh, and uh, the, the tool that we've used uh, is called uh, SDMTMB. Uh, and it was developed by Sean Anderson and colleagues. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's an R package. Uh, so it's you know, e easily accessible and easy to pick up for uh, people that use R. Um, and uh, what it does is basically fits uh, spatial and spatial temporal predictive process models. Uh, and it uses uh, template model builder, TMB, uh, hence the name. Uh, and uh, it uses uh, Gaussian random fields. So um, I'm not going to go really into uh, much detail about this approach. I would uh, refer people to the documentation of the package, which is excellent, and uh, to a number of papers that are associated to this package from the authors of the package itself. But in a nutshell, what happens here is that um, you have a spatial process, so you have your say fish abundance um, in your georeference data and uh, the package basically uh, models this uh, spatial process as a Gaussian mark of random field um, and uh, it, this process is approximated in space uh, by a mesh right um, and uh, the package calculates well the package estimates uh, the the value of the process the value of the random field at the nodes of this mesh by uh, stochastic partial difference, uh, differential equations. Um, and once you've estimated the values at the nodes of the mesh, then uh, by, by linear interpolation, you can uh, um, estimate or re-predict values over a, a, a continuous spatial field, uh, which then becomes useful uh, to map things back to the Atlantis geometry. Um, there, you know, there's a lots of lots of buzz and whistles. Uh, you can incorporate time if you have a temporal component of some kind in your data. Uh, you can uh, um, you can incorporate other predictors uh, like depth and 
temperature and any environmental covariate that you might have uh, with your data. Um, and these are incorporated as smoothers. Um, you can fit models from different families depending on, on, on your needs um, and, and, and on the on, on the shape of the of the response variable as as with other GLMs. Um, and uh, one common application for an approach like this would be uh, species distribution models or SDMs. Hence the name SDM TMB. So I'll be walking through um, some uh, bottom troll data. Uh, well, I'll be, I'll be walking through an example uh, to kind of illustrate uh, how the process works. And I'll be using as the example, the bottom troll data from uh, uh, the Gulf of Alaska. That is one of the main uh, data streams that we used uh, uh, to parameterize uh, the Gulf of Alaska Atlantis model. And this is data that is collected collected by the Alaska Fisheries Science Center of, of NOAA. Um, and uh, the, the goal here is to um, capture long-term historical spatial distributions of, of Gulf of Alaska species. Um, and uh, we want to know these for the movement parameters and for the initial conditions, um, which in our specific case are 1990 for our model. Um, and also then we want to be able to use the juvenile distributions for the distribution of the recruits in the, in the biology. So a couple of words about this data set, uh, just to start. Um, uh, it is a fisher independent survey uh, operated with uh, bottom troll sampling in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, it is a shelf survey, so it's only areas shallower than a thousand meters depth. Uh, it's a survey that is, is mostly focused on ground fish um, and uh, it counts some, you know, over 13,000 holes from 1984 to present days. Uh, it is a summer sampling, uh, which is important to keep in mind. Um, and it reports biomass and swept area from which you can get CPUE um, if you want. And it comes with uh, coordinates for each hole and with that and also with some physical variables. So the first step of the workflow is uh, you, you pick a species. So you'll be doing this for you know, separate times for separate species. You pick a species, you pick a life stage. So adult or juvenile, we, get, we have adult our tooth plunder from 2019 in this specific case, but essentially you have your georeferenced data set and uh, you have uh, a CPUE, so you have a, embedded in your data, a measure of spatial effort. Um, so the package constructs a spatial mesh uh, with the INLA uh, approach, and I'm not really gonna go into details here, but it's a mesh that is based on the spatial location of your data set. Um, as the next step, you can you get to choose the predictors that you want to include in in your model. Um, for for the development of the Gulf of Alaska model, we're really only using depth of of the holes, uh, but other people have have tried different things in the in the California current, and you can if you have the data, you can definitely include other predictors if it makes sense, such as temperature. Um, and then you get to decide uh, uh, if uh, um, you want to run a spatial or spatiotemporal model. So if you want to include year in uh, the you know the year variable in your model, which we do in this case because we have data that has been collected since 1984 to present days. Um, and then you get to decide the shape of uh, the, the family of your model in this case, because we have a lot of zeros and because we have this kind of distribution, it makes sense to start with a 2D model, but uh, different cases may call for different options. Um, and so then you do your model fit and uh, you examine, uh, uh, you know, the residual, you just do an assessment of your fit. You can decide if you want to go back and revisit something. 
use different predictors, use different, you know, a different uh, family to fit the model. Uh, if your spatial mesh made sense or not, and all this sort of stuff. It's also always good to check the residuals in space, which is not indicated on in these figures here. Uh, but, you know, the top two would be what people quite typically do um, to, to evaluate uh, model fit. Uh, and the bottom is just a visualization of, uh, of your response. Um, sorry of your of your predictor which is which in this case is that um so at that point uh you know you, you you've done the estimation uh you can predict back onto a regular grid so in, for the gulf of alaska model we use uh, a 10 kilometer grid um and you know the package has a functionality that allows you to repredict from the model that you just feed it back onto uh, these custom grids. Um, and so at that point you have a smooth surface essentially, or well smoother than the data that you had in the first place. Uh, and uh, at that point you can map each individual point uh, or each individual prediction back onto your uh, autonomous boxes. Um, and at that point, you have a set of points per box, and uh, you can do things like uh, taking just you know just taking an average or integrating whichever way makes sense for your specific case. Um, and then once you've got your CPU per box, in our case, uh, uh, we go and we estimate uh, a biomass of that species per box based on that CPU, based on that average CPU, and based on the size of the box itself. And that then allows us to uh, you know, go back and calculate the, uh, the proportion of that biomass, of the total biomass for each box. Uh, it's a pretty flexible approach that we use uh, with some variation for a lot of data sets, um, including a separate bottom troll data set for British Columbia. Uh, I'm not going to go into details for how stitch, for how we stitch these uh, predictions per box with the ones from Alaska. But if you're interested, just let me know. Um, we apply a similar approach for other data sets, including long line data, uh, surface troll, uh, some observer data for the winter distributions. Because like I mentioned, a lot of these is based on summer distributions. And so for things like the S1, S4 parameters, which are per quarter, you might want to um, you know, either bear in mind that you're using the same distribution throughout the year or use something else for uh, the other seasons, if you have it. So in summary, uh, georeference data can inform spatial parameters in the biology.prm uh, uh, and the spatial distributions in the initial conditions. And uh, SDMTMB is uh, an R package that can be used uh, um, to basically smooth back georeference data um, onto uh, something that can map back to Atlantis. Um, I think there's you know, some interesting uh, points to discuss would be, uh, okay, what do you do uh, in a data pool situation? I mentioned we have 13,000 holes that we can use for our purposes in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, that, is obviously, that is obviously not always the case. Um, so we, we can discuss about that. Uh, how do you decide how complex your models should be? What's the right level of complexity? How many predictors do you include? Do you use temperature, you don't. Um, do you use a spatial only model? Do you include ear? Um, there's a lot of resources for that, but um, I'm happy to discuss if people are interested. Um, how do we assess the skills of these predictions? We kind of came up with our homebrew method uh, but, you know, most of the times it's, you know, whatever applies to other kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, SDMs frameworks applies here as well. Um, if you've applied a similar method uh, or you have questions or comments, uh, please contact me um, and you can find the code for this approach at this link. Just drop me an email um, and I can pass that on to you. Thank you.